I'm with Choke today. We don't need no introductions. It's not our first rodeo. My boy done been here a few times. Uh, interviewed him on Hot 107.9. Interviewed him for Magic, where I'm currently at. Interviewed him for Reese Radio. He's always finding a way to reinvent himself. Always finding a way to stay a foot on the neck of the industry. My guy, my brother from another Choke No Joke is in the building. I'm going to say brother from another because I'll call him outside of, you know, internet stuff and, and radio yeah. stuff and we chop it up a little bit and uh man he's just a good dude sometimes misunderstood but always trying to say the right things and just the real things and that's not always the popular thing so the internet seems to say what's uh, up homie the, yeah the truth is not the popular <laughs> thing that's it it's all it's just the truth and we 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 work in the industry full of lies. Yeah, big you facts. <laughs> first, the first record that artists come out with, he got the cars, he got the jewelry, mm -hmm. he got the house, and then the director say, "Cut, <laughs> give it back." <laughs> so everything's a lie from the gate. Man, and, and the reason you can speak on these things is because you've seen it. We're gonna get into what you have going right now: stage plays, documentaries, yes, legends, uh, but. The way I met you was because of the documentary you did from the tunnel. You were there firsthand to see the rise of Rockefeller, the breakup of Rockefeller. You were there to see all of these amazing artists that came through the tunnel from Mob Deep to the first time that some of the Southern artists hit the stage to all of the big names in the day. Uh, you were there to see these people, but not just there. You had your, your lens going. You had you were the first person really to, to document the hip hop culture at the at the part of when those big checks started coming and the peak started coming yeah it, it was very few of us uh you know um ralph mcdaniels look, look, he well, his camera York, right you he, know you, you had dudes in, <laughs> in the south right you know that was doing it and you know because i even worked with with guys like luke mm. you know what i'm saying like even luke uh called me up to to come and film stuff for him one time right well maybe more than once but even luke you know that's what i'll be like man i smoke weed with snoop <laughs> i fucked hoes with luke you, you know what i mean he can really say it <laughs> like i can re i really did right, that you really did it yeah right. like yo like so these people be talking like this industry stuff but y'all ain't live it you oh know what i'm God, saying yeah, yeah like come on man like yes yeah. fighting for little kim uh -huh. right Look, like it's man, my, my story is crazy. <laughs> you were slapping people for Lil' Kim before man though. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get it. it I, I ain't gonna say I slapped him, but right, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was definitely defending her before right. Mano. Yes, right, man. Choke is in the building. Uh, you could go back to a previous interview to get all of the backstory because we talked about all that last time, man. And uh, as you can see, he's putting his camera up now because he's not gonna let a moment go without getting some documentary, yeah. which I love. I gotta introduce my people to you. I appreciate it. What's yeah, up, man. his people? What's Wait. up, Choke's people? <laughs> we ain't where um, I ain't go yet. Yeah, I really good. love uh, I really love what you're doing in that space, man. You found a way to basically create your own cable network, your own pay-per-view network, mm -hmm. because you got stuff that people want to see, man. And, and and they should it should be premium content, right? You right. Know what I mean, so well, you know, uh, now nah, I'll say that behind the scenes. I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> that that'll be giving up too much game, right? You know right, what I'm saying? right. But um, I I found a way to to. Uh, with all the content and stuff that I created, mm -hmm. I found my niche mm -hmm. to get it out. There we go. I you love know it. What I'm I love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll say it that way. That, I love that, man. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta subscribe to uh to his channels and his his uh channels and make sure that you see the other stuff he wanted to say. You right, know what right. I'm saying? But we can appreciate it, man. But well, like I said, with the reinvention, not only are you creating this incredible content, you got all these people that tap in with you to see what really happened. You know what I'm saying? Right, with right, with right. some of these people, like you know, had stories from Fabulous to Bizzino to Fat Joe to Jay Z to Dame to everybody lately right. that that's been having the internet buzzing. But with the reinvention, now you step out and, and start to showcase a different part of your artistry. You want a stage play, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. The stage, <laughs> and that started at the beginning of the year. Mm. You know, like I do the current events. That's why it seems like you know I'm on top of everybody, mm -hmm. but I, I want people to just embrace me as like the black Howard Stern. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just, in, just, mm -hmm. just. I know y'all know me for a whole bunch of other different <laughs> things. You know what I'm saying? Right. But 
try to embrace me as a, a person that brings y'all entertainment news. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what that's what I am now. Uh -huh. I'm I'm better than TMZ. You are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm more honest than any other network that got that get that one sheet mm -hmm. that comes from somewhere up here, somewhere, and then it, it, it gets down here, and then this uh this one sheet gets spreads to all the news outlets, and then they just put a spin on words, but everybody's reporting the same thing, right? You know what I'm saying? Everybody got the same breaking news. You turn from, let's say, mm -hmm. the 5 o'clock news. From 5 to 10, they talking the breaking news, mm -hmm. right? From uh, uh, 5.15 to 5.20, they may be talking sports. Mm -hmm. But they all, all the stations is doing it all at the same right. time. The same and then thing. after, the uh, from 5.25 to 5.30, it's the weather. Yeah, everybody's doing the weather, but it, it's the same thing. And then everybody get a break, a two minute block mm -hmm. for local news. Right, you know what I'm saying. Right. So you might hear an Alpharetta or a cat got stuck in the tree. Right, or you know, over where he at. Uh, Black man starts a uh, chicken business. <laughs> Appreciate you know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> right. right. You know, he said, black man with eggs. You know right. what I'm saying? Dude, in the pandemic, we found a black man. He decided, hey, I'm going to raise chickens. And now he has a flourishing uh, farm with where you can get your eggs and from the, the locals can get it. And you're, they'll be able to tell your story mm -hmm. as a local, but everything else got to follow that. That, format. that pattern, that format from yeah. something that's coming from the same place almost. It, it, right? Yeah, that's why right. if you watch the news, we could just <clears throat> click and, and and click, and they'll be talking about the same goddamn story. Right. Or they they talked about one story first mm -hmm. before the other station talked right. about it, but they all got them same three bullet points mm -hmm. that they got to talk about in the first ten minutes. That's real, but we see that too in the blogs because the most popular blogs like the shade rooms and the, the neighborhoods and all of those. All of those kind of had the same shares and the same stories, too. And yeah. then you'll come from the far left field like, nah, this is what happened over here. Right. Check this out. That's because like. all of those is controlled. Mm. Like the Jasmine brand, that's that's the, the LGBT blog. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She, they, they always promoting uh, anything with um, the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. Whether it's ridiculous or not, that, that's, that's what they push. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got the the <laughs> other ones, they they push work what cuts the check. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So if I ain't gonna say no no particular artist <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> right. but like if a certain artist is uh, a friend of theirs, mm -hmm. you're not gonna see no truth about them on there. Got you. You know what I'm saying? So you saying so, it's filtered based upon the, the money's coming in. Yeah, it, it just went from the radio station politics yeah. now into the blog <clears throat> politics. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I've seen situations where, you know, I was a part of stories and it'd be real bad on the person who's mm -hmm. popular. Yeah. And these blogs, they won't pick up the story. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll see me and a few other outlets that don't have the connection right. or don't get a check from Ace of Spades right. or, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, or Ciroc. You know yo, what I'm saying? We ain't getting crazy, a Ciroc bro. check, whatever, whatever. Because <laughs> then, then Puff could call like, yo, Playboy, Playboy. No, 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 no. You can't talk down. about that, Playboy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm the guy that don't get the checks mm -hmm. from the sponsors. Right. So I could talk about it. These people, these blogs, they get they, they get the sponsorship on the banners. Right. They get to come to the events to mm. do the red carpet, so gotcha. they can't tell you the truth. Gotcha. So it makes me look like the goddamn bad guy. It makes you look like somebody just yelling from the back, like, "Hey, this will really happen." But in real life, you don't have a tie-in to 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 curve your news. You can say what you think is real based on your research. Yeah, like, and sometimes I I, I will I will take people's uh, opinions and mm -hmm. and advice. Like it's a, it's a story right now. That's super big. Yeah. Right? And, you know, a person brought it to me, and then I went and I reported it. Right. I, like, I, I don't even think that joint was finished loading. <laughs> My phone was ringing. Right. Right? And he was like, nah, choke, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. And the valid point was, you know, it can hurt a family, kids involved. But I, like, I like that you have enough integrity 
to go back and be like, I could get a gazillion views on this or monetize this, but because of that, I'm going to retract that. Right. And right. that's why I say you a real one, bro. And right. that's why I got to hit the hype bell for that. Thank right. you. I appreciate it. Right. That. No doubt. Yeah. So, you know, I took it down. Mm -hmm. cause, and then I know that people seen, some people saw right, it. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it didn't, it didn't, I know that. It it was down in within two minutes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because it would be everywhere right, right now. Right, right. And I, it kind of showed me the the power that I got. Now. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying. So, you know, truth to power. But <laughs> when when they called me and I took it down, I I went and looked to see if it would have any traction, and it, and it would. It didn't. Yeah. Right. And I'm seeing it trinkle a little bit now. Right. But had if they got it from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what it is it's off camera, crazy. but right, right, right. But um, like I, you know, I you just gotta have integrity with right. certain things. So I'm not against anybody calling me and checking me or telling me, yo, I don't think that's a good idea, right? Because I'm I'm not God, right? You know, I mean, I but I, I, I've had a conversation with you before. Like I yeah. called you and was like, yo, what's up with this situation? Because oh, the five mics thing, right? right. Both yeah. of y'all my people, and then we yeah. talked about it was all good. You yeah, know what and saying? it was all probably fake. Collar but, choke, probably collar but, choke. You got your million dollar jacket is is throwing off your two million dollar shirt. There you go. Now we yeah. back in business. Let's okay, get busy. Go, <laughs> Live TV situation. Pow. It's all good. All right. But yo, now now look, let me now. Mm -hmm. Let me let's let's go back to, to, <laughs> to the five mics thing, right? right? Now you knew it was fake because uh, you know you called and then Lord Jamal knew it was fake, right? Right. So we, me and him, knew it was fake from the beginning. It was a social experiment, right? right? But it worked. <laughs> it you. worked. Yeah. Right. It worked. <laughs> Fat Joe did records with this nigga. Right. Everybody, Jim Jones, they all ran right. around because they, and it showed me who don't fuck with me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, Fat Joe, he was over there waving uh, Jay Z pom poms. Come on. <laughs> yeah, them, them old Rockefeller niggas on, on the, on the internet, on YouTube, these niggas is bums. That's why I be giving it to him. Mm. Like, nigga, you on Jay Z nuts now. You ain't even, you, you never, you, somebody at your door. All right, we're we going to get it. We're going to get it. We're going right. to get it in a second. We're right. going to get it in a second. But um, what you call it? So, you know, him him going at me, like, because now he Rock Nation or right. whatever. Right. Like, he taking shots or whatever. So, um, damn, what? Oh, so, yeah. so with the five mics thing, well, I sat there and I told him, yo, I'm going to make you a star. Right. You, you, you got the nice character to... I'm a fake a beef with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? And watch these niggas. Mm -hmm. I said, watch them. They're going to fall for it. Right. All you got to do is play the role. Right. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to get too disrespectful. Right. But I'm going I'm to I'm play it. Right. He's like, yo, Cho, you'll do that for me? Yeah. Right. Why not? Right. You know why what I'm not? saying? Like, right. why have a real beef and, 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 <laughs> and for somebody to get hurt later now? Like, when we could play the same mind game on these niggas. And you blow up, right. and, and, and it is, it'll work. Right. For me, I don't care. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no ego, mm -hmm. right? And I don't have no pride when they go there because ego and the pride will fucking kill a man. Right. And it's it's uh, sometimes people can't see, they can't see um, the talent of somebody else until they get out their own way. Sometimes, right? So five can rap, he can spit. He got the he got the the hip hop package. Okay, right. but for some reason he couldn't get to the door. Now people are saying, "Oh, we notice him now, right?" Because of this situation, this beef. Yeah, right. it, it, and it's ridiculous. It is. It took a, a, a beef, yeah, for people to watch it. But it showed me how many motherfuckers was against me. Right. These stupid ass niggas. You cut the grass, the motherfucking snakes will show. <laughs> right. They fell for it. This nigga was on Mad Papa. Yeah, he was. He was on Lord Jamal. Bro. Right. Like. Like I'm not saying that he he hasn't done interviews and and, and stuff before, but I brought a whole no, new light to this nigga. This nigga Fat Joe's got this nigga on Math Office sitting next to him. Right, they popping champagne. Ah, got you, mm -hmm. suckers. Ah, y'all fell for it. I blew the nigga up <laughs> off of y'all ignorance. 
And y'all fell for it now. Mm. And then when I go and say, oh, it's fake, now they don't fuck with them no more. Nah, craziness. <laughs> Crazy. And now I told, when I revealed that that was a social experiment, mm -hmm. and I, I even mentioned your name, like you knew, mm -hmm. Lord Jamal knew. Right. As soon as I said that shit, all them niggas stop fucking with them. That's crazy. Nigga, you a fake. Right. You know what I'm saying? But y'all fake. Right. Because y'all jumped on him thinking he was this super goon that I gave him the name. Right. My whole concept. You know what I'm saying? Right. And look, now Little Mama's his girlfriend. Everybody went, went for this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? But y'all don't fuck with me, stupids. <laughs> hey, man, we, we would choke right now. Now, as always, we know you from the documentary space, too. You know, like we talked about the tunnel and the series and everything like that. The man with the camera. Tell us about something you got popping off right now. You got something that's about to hit the networks. Yeah, uh, I can't get I can't talk too much about it. Okay, but on uh, August August thirteenth, y'all look out on A and E. Okay, the old dirty bastard, uh, the tales of two dirts. Mm. Let me hit the that. The tales of two dirties. Right. Yeah, that's, that's what's up. That's that, definitely that's, what's, that's up. what's dropping on A and E, August thirteenth. Y'all check it out. I'm a part of that, mm. and that's all I can really say. But the old Dirty Bastard documentary, August 13th, on A&E. That's all right? what's up, man. I the love that. The tales of two dirties. <laughs> yeah. I love that, man. Make sure y'all check that out. We we all went crazy over the Wu-Tang on Hulu. Uh, we got to, got to see a little bit, a little this and that. Everybody started doing their research. Now you about to drop this doc. I know we want to see the tale of two dirties. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's fire. That's what's up. Speaking of uh, Wu Tang and me and Beha, you shout out to shout Beha. out Beha. That's my dog. Right. First radio show I ever did in the daytime was me and Beha Sunday mornings on hot on FM first FM major station. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a little history yeah. for y'all out there. <laughs> shout out to Beha. But me and Beha, we had this uh, big debate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask your opinion on it. Let's do it. Which crew is greater? Mm. Okay. Dungeon family? Okay. Or Wu Tang Clan? See, this is where it's gonna get tricky. I'm sure B. I said Dungeon Family. I'm sure. He from he's from here. He's supposed to say that. I'm from Jersey. I saw what Wu Tang did to the culture. This is just my opinion. Outcast is everlasting. TLC came from there. Future came from the Dungeon Family. There's been a lot of history. That's this is political stuff. I see. I, I get it. I, it's a lot more branches that come off that tree. Attic Crew, Shaw Paul, Young Bloods, all of them. I know a lot about that situation. But when I say Wu Tang, everybody in the tri state area was wearing wallabies. <laughs> everybody was throwing up the Wu. Everybody had a Wu Tang shirt. For goodness sakes, they had comic books. You know what I'm saying? I saw what that movement out of Staten Island did. And a little bit of Brooklyn and a couple other places did for the culture. And I would have to say Wu-Tang. Because right now, you can go to China and book a Wu-Tang show. You can go book an Outcast show, but I don't know if you can book a Dungeon Family show. I don't know if the brand is as strong globally. Dungeon Family brand, not the individual branches right, that right, came right. up. The yeah, Dungeon Family we, brand, yeah. I don't know if it's as strong as the Wu-Tang brand. And also, if you put... Wu Tang in an arena. I'm talking about Wu Tang. A whole Wu, obviously not with ODB, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe his son. You put Wu Tang in an arena. Mm -hmm. I think the arena is gonna sell out if you get all of them together. I and don't they on know. tour right now. That's, what, that's what I'm saying. Right. So I'm gonna say it's a very close race. Maybe like a one A one B race, but I would say Wu Tang. I gotta go with Wu. Be high. You heard that. <laughs> <laughs> now me and my dog beefing. Be high, you heard that? <laughs> I, I hope you're listening somewhere. You know, be high. Did you hear that? Okay. And I grew. I, I was probably the only person in Jersey bumping Outkast before they was Outkast. Like I, yeah. I was bumping Dungeon Family and different artists coming from out of that camp. Yeah, Beehive you know I mean? was talking crazy. I know. I know he was. He's supposed to. He's yeah, gonna do yeah, that. He was. A, he was. <laughs> Oh, he had to cut that interview up. He's so bad. I'm like, sing that song you talking about. He cut. <laughs> <laughs> Cameraman behind, like, singing the song. So I'm like, 
He trying yeah. to get the word. <laughs> man, oh man, he got smoked right. in that debate. It's so many songs from just a Wu, just Wu Tang. Without you, all the separate without stuff. Without the separate stuff that you could just, you hit a beat and you know the song. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Out, out, uh, Outcast and Goody Mob is Dungeon's family, strongest asset. Yeah. After that, I, I mean, future. Come on, man. You can't, it's hard. It's very far removed, but he was out the camp. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, right? Because then you can future, say the same. Future is like throwing a ring in there, man. Like, <laughs> nah, he, he bro, wasn't he, even a he, part he, of it. He got the nah. Dungeon Family tag and everything. So, right. man, so he was a whole there. bunch of niggas that, that, all right, so how many he, people nah, got nah, Wu-Tang nah, tattoos? Nah. <laughs> That's people out in Asia with him, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. But they he was there in the basement. Then. He was in the dungeon, bro. You got it. When? He was there. When they was grown-ass men and he was right. a little baby? Man, listen, he was there. I'm going to just say he was there. But even with Future, you still got the Tell whole Tell me a, 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 a music video Future was in off, off in Southern playlist of Cadillac music. When when Big was walking through the house, right? I'm yeah. going to tell you, when Big was walking through the house, coming from out the dungeon through the living room, yeah. you're going to see almost everybody from Attic Crew, PK, Sean Paul, you're going to see a bunch of them. And if you see, you're going to see Meathead, a.k.a. Future, in the back in that video. That okay. one, that's, the, that's the one. I can't go into details okay, nah, about nah, the nah, nah, I'm going to say he was there, though. But how old was he? He wasn't rapping then. Yeah, yeah, don't tell him what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to give him Future. But when Dungeon Family was putting out music, I don't I don't know Future to be on no Goody right. album. I don't, I don't albums. know him to be on the records. I don't know him to be on no Outcast records. records. Right. right. He what was with Sleepy Brown? I'm going to say CeeLo, Killer Mike. Right. Around then it was them. C yeah, Goody Mob, Gip, them. Yeah. But you're right, though. I mean, you're right when you say Outkast, Goody Mob, and then we could take their separate careers as well. And 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 then the production crew from from them, you know, from Organized Noise, yeah, Sleepy right them. Yeah. Right. They had some amazing stuff, right? Right. But when you look at Wu-Tang's body of work as a collective and then as individual artists, you got to say, all right, come on now. We can't just be regionally biased. We got to just look at the work and then look at the cultural impact. Right. You know what I'm saying? And their cultural impact is Wu-Tang the brand versus Dungeon Family brand is much bigger. It's heavier. Yeah. I, right. I, I, they I, both did amazing stuff, but it's heavier. I, I'm, I'm going to definitely have fun sending this to uh, Beehive. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out my brother, man. <laughs> That's what's up. Now, now, that children got me an internet beef. Now, it's like, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, be out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo, That's what's up, Chang. man. Woo. <laughs> I was about to yell out Onyx. That's how yeah. I know. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? I yeah. came up with, but nah, it's all good. But uh, nah, I, man, but so, we we love the Dungeon Family. Right. We ain't taking nothing from them. Big facts. But they they definitely not a bigger brand than Wu Tang. Big facts. So man, shout out to my homie Choke. Man, I appreciate you pulling up on me, bro. Uh, yeah. Tell them where to follow you at on, on IG and cross social media. Media for those on, on this channel that, that want to tap in with you. All right, well, y'all can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Choke No Joke. Choke No Joke, Arthur D. Austin the third. That's my channel, hmm. my government name, and my director's <laughs> name. Uh, on Instagram is Choke No Joke Official. Hmm. Twitter, Choke underscore No underscore Joke on Twitter. Um, what else? I'm on LinkedIn. Look me up by my real name or uh, TikTok. All choke no joke. Everything's choke no joke for the most part, unless it's the fakes. You know what I'm saying? It's only one. All right? There we go, man. I appreciate you pulling up on it. Shout out to everybody in the chat going crazy right now, man. <laughs> Shout out my boy Jers, Twan, Adrian, man. I see y'all. I appreciate y'all tapping in with us. Look, we gonna get back. Look yeah. for make sure y'all look out for the play. Um, right, sanctified. Uh, written, produced, and directed by Javon Johnson. Mm -hmm. You know, we shot it already, uh, a live play um, in Alpharetta. Mm -hmm. uh, the play is a comedy gospel play. I play Deacon Hall in it. <laughs> I uh, choke as a deacon. I got to see it. Yeah. So, you know, once that, you know, is done, edit it up, y'all look out for it. I will come back and tell y'all where y'all can find it. But uh, I'll be out. Uh, doing my next project soon. Hopefully, the tour uh, Sanctified will be coming to y'all city. Yep. But um, and other than that, uh, August 13th, A and E, Old Dirty Bastard, mm. The Tale of Two Dirties. All right. Dope. That's lit, man. Shout out my boy Choke. Appreciate you, homie. Got the homie Funny Man Gatlin coming up in a few. Shout out Javon Johnson. Y'all can roll back. 
In the archives, a few videos back and check out. I'll sit down and interview. He talk more in depth about I, the play. I, I got one thing for y'all before talk to I me. go for Beehive. Talk to me. I wore this just for Beehive. <laughs> so you know crazy, I was going to ask him the question, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Toke, man. Toke is out of his mind, bro. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh, baby, I like it, bro. <laughs> Ooh, baby, I like it, bro. Yeah. Ooh, baby, I like it, bro. August 13th. There Ooh, baby, we go. Ooh, I like it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> y'all keep it tapped in, man. Reese Radio, we appreciate y'all. We out. <laughs> it's time to see who's with Reese. Hey. Yeah. Who you with? Wendy Williams is in here. How you doing? You know who it is, the 